we're going to have one of the prettiest musical instruments in the world for you in just a second uh, with uh, the soloist principal oboe with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, Jennifer Kristen. You've probably seen her on stage before with the symphony, and you're going to see her featured just about a week from now at a very special show they're putting on at Hilton Circle Theater. First of all, welcome, Jennifer. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm great, Ray. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, as, as a woodwind myself, saxophone player who has observed oboe for many years, normally I would see you would see Jennifer with the reed in her mouth until it's time to play. But that would be kind of a boring interview if we did it that way. So um, <laughs> I, I assume you have something that is soaking the reed here before we get into the oboe. I do. I have a couple of reeds that are in water right now. In water. Okay. <laughs> I see. A couple of many. So yeah. it's a case that they make specially for the, to, to soak the reeds then. Exactly. Exactly. And I make all of these reeds actually. Got you. Okay. Yep. And um, yeah, I have two soaking right now, so hopefully they'll be ready to go to hope, play later. Hope, hope so. <laughs> well, it's just, but it'll, it'll be ready to go because she's a she's a professional. Because you've been doing this That's for right. uh, a very long time, haven't you? A very long time. I've been principal oboe with the symphony. This is my 11th season, mm -hmm. which is crazy to think. Um, and I've been playing oboe since I was in fourth grade. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing piano since I was five, so it's music is in my blood. At That's this a point. bit. Is that a bit early to start oboe for most people? Or? It is. It's interesting. My school they let us start in fourth grade as long as we had decent grades at school. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools don't start till sixth grade for yeah. oboe and bassoon. As a lot of schools don't start till sixth grade for anything. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. say, beginner band program in a lot of the school systems here usually start sixth grade or that's even true. seventh grade sometimes. So. That's true. Yeah, we were lucky. We had a wonderful elementary band teacher. So you got a, you got a head start. Why the oboe? Because well, that's, that's not the easiest instrument in the world. It's not, and I did not know that when I picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, but it's not easy. Yeah. It, yes. Um, so I actually, there was an instrument petting zoo that came. The high schoolers came over, mm -hmm. and they played all these instruments for us. And um, I thought at the time I was going to play clarinet, but when I heard the clarinet, I wasn't really connected with it. So then um, I was really feeling the crunch. My twin sister picked the flute. She knew what she was going to do. I was sitting next to my best friend. She picked the oboe, so I picked the oboe. The audition process for a symphony orchestra has always interested me because it's changed a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. Some of that was due to, frankly, sexism in, yes. in symphony orchestras. Uh, and, and I know the process to uh, probably get into the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra was different than it may have been 20, 30 years ago. That is probably true. Yeah, the whole audition is behind a screen. Yeah. There are multiple rounds. For Indianapolis, uh, my whole audition, even the finals, were behind a screen. Some orchestras will lift the screen for the finals mm -hmm. because they want to be able to play with the musicians or see how they might move in a section. But I felt very lucky that it was all behind the screen because I was very young. Um, I was a girl. I was a female, so um, I, I felt like I was able to just express myself and do whatever I could behind the screen, and oh. it worked out. Are we in a time where that doesn't matter as much anymore? We hope. We hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope so. I mean, we the fact that we voted to lift the screen, I'm personally excited to have that option for um, for some auditions, you know, in the wind section because mm -hmm. then we can play with people and I would like to think that we're in, we're getting better with everything. Well, you've been here 11 years. I guess you're a Hoosier now, right? I am. I know we have two kids. They're <laughs> definitely Hoosiers. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're going to be featured next week with the uh, the Strauss Oboe Concerto. Uh, this is Ricard Strauss, just to, yes. to make sure, because there's Johann Strauss, there's uh, Ricard Strauss. And yes. so what, what's special about this? This is one of the last things he wrote, correct? Or it composed? is, yes, three years before his death, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, it's actually a really interesting story with how he came to write it. And I didn't really know this. I just thought, we're so lucky he wrote an Oboe Concerto. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a ton of Oboe Concertos, and Strauss wrote one. so. Um, he wrote this one, and I think the horn concerto towards the end of his life. And what I found out was that John Delancey, an oboist, an American oboist, was uh, doing his duty as a soldier in Europe mm -hmm. at the very end of World War II, and he befriended Strauss, and they got to know each other. And he asked him one day, have you ever considered writing an oboe concerto? And Strauss just said no, and left it at that, and that's what Delancey thought. And then I think six months later was when it was published and um, we're going into publishing and Delancey was shocked. He didn't know that this, this was going to happen. And um, so what happened was that Strauss gave Delancey the American premiere rights, but Delancey was assistant principal of Philadelphia at the time, so he was not able to premiere it. Um, Marcel Tabato was principal oboe at the hmm. time. So I think it was eight years later, Delancey became principal. 
And then it wasn't until like 10 years after that that Delancey finally played this Joust Concerto. Wow. So it was premiered, you know, in Europe and other Americans played it. I think Delancey gave up his rights eventually to some other Americans to play the concerto before him. And that's uh, John Delancey. I was going to make a Q joke about Star Trek The Next Generation John Delancey, but different John Delancey, mm -hmm. probably over the heads of, uh, of some folks. Um, but uh, so that's a very interesting story. So we'll get to see you play this uh, next week at, with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, part of a show. There's a Beethoven piece that's part of that concert too, yeah, I believe. Beethoven 6th. Mm -hmm, Beethoven 6th. So that's going to be at the Hilbert Circle Theater with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. We'll have the info at WRTV.com. And right now, we're going to hear Jennifer demonstrate a little bit of what, what are you planning on playing for us here? I was thinking of giving a little teaser, actually. A teaser, okay. uh, The cadenza, one of the cadenzas of, of the Strauss. Beautiful. Jennifer Kristen, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And uh, you will go see her, we hope, at uh, Hilbert Circle Theater, Beethoven Sixth Symphony, and the Strauss Oboe Concerto featuring Jennifer Kristen, February 17th and 18th at the Hilbert Circle Theater with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Jennifer, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ray.